Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Dibya Madan. Uh, this is the first video we are starting uh, physiology series for first year medical students. It's based on Ginong's medical physiology. So we are discussing page by page uh, different uh, concepts of physiology. Physiology was my favorite subject in first year and I thought that I share my love for it with you all. So starting with the, the chapter fourth, that is the excitable tissue nerve. We, we are going to discuss nerve physiology and we'll go by the concept of the book that tells us objectives. That is by ending this chapter, we should know this, this and this. And uh, the concept of the book, book is really nice. It gives little boxes with clinical scenarios and applications of physiology. So I'm going by the pattern of the book only. So starting excitable tissue nerve. Here we go. The first objective we are going to discuss in this video is uh, knowing about glial cells, glial tissues, where, what are their types, what is their function, uh, following a brief introduction about our central nervous system. You know that it is a fascinating system in our body containing about 100 billion neurons, right? And uh, what's more uh, fascinating is more than the neurons, 2 to 10 times the number of neurons are the glial tissue. So they make uh, our, a big chunk of the central nervous system, right? So we cannot forget about them. So glial tissue, the term glia or glial come from Greek, right? It means glue. So earlier it was believed that these glial cells just act like a glue and they bind the neurons together, bind our central nervous system together. But they are actually more than that. They are uh, just like partners with the neurons and they help in communication. So they are as important as the neurons. So uh, discussing what are the types, what are the role. Uh, there are two types of glial tissues, uh, glial cells. They are microglia and macroglia. It is important to uh, notice here that the microglia cells, they are the scavenger cells. They are actually the macrophages that have migrated into the central nervous system. Embryologically, they are not at all connected to the neural system. They are just the macrophages that have migrated to the central nervous system. These are the macroglial cells and they, they are important in diseases like Alzheimer's disease, multiple sclerosis, where there are different, different abnormal proteins that are accumulated and these microglial cells, scavenger cells, engulf them, right? Also, one important uh, and fascinating thing about glial cells is that they're very different from the neural tissue in the way that they proliferate and they uh, multiply. Right? We all know that nerve, they do not regenerate or multiply over the time, but these glial cells, over the period of time, they multiply and multiply. And uh, this is really important when it comes to stroke or ischemia. The term gliosis is really common, right? Whatever happens whenever there is injury to our central nervous system, these glial cells proliferate. And these proliferated uh, glial cells form a scar tissue, and this is known as gliosis right so coming on to the macroglia we have discussed microglia these are the scavenger cells just migrating into the cns has no uh, origin from the neural system the macroglia these are the cells uh, oligodendrocytes schwann cells and astrocytes the oligodendrocytes these are the cells that form the Myelin, myelin tissue in the central nervous system and the Schwann cells are the cells that form myelin in the peripheral nervous system. I used to remember this by a simple mnemonic. I am sure that you people also use this. this these are the age-old mnemonics that are famous in the medical colleges. Uh, these are CMO and PSM. So CMO, that means central nervous system, myelination, M for myelination is done by O, that is oligodendrocyte. And PSM, that is peripheral nervous system, M for myelination is done by S, that is Schwann cells. So CMO and PSM. So the Schwann cells, they are involved in the myelination of the peripheral nerves, whereas oligodendrocytes, they are important in the myelination of our central nervous system, right? And the third type of macroglia cells, these are astrocytes. They get their name from uh, their shape. They are star-shaped, that's why they are called astrocytes. The two type of astrocytes, one are fibrous astrocytes, other are protoplasmic astrocytes. These fibrous astrocytes, these fibrous astrocytes are uh, predominantly uh, have, uh, are found in the white matter and they contain intermediate filaments 
whereas the protoplasma astrocytes they're mostly seen in the gray matter right what they actually do is astrocytes they play a really important role in forming blood brain barrier as they are star shaped they send out protection projections here and there projections go towards the endothelium of the blood vessels forming the blood brain barrier the other projections go and support neurons and they also help in maintaining the membrane potential of the neurons so these are the glial tissue there are beautiful diagrams given in Genong as well as you can see the diagram of oligodendrocyte this tiny oligodendrocyte it is forming uh, white matter in the neurons these are certain perineural oligodendrocytes that form support of the cell bodies of the neurons these are the Schwann cells that twirl around the peripheral nose forming the myelin and these are the astrocytes the star like cells that are sending projections here to the capillaries forming blood brain barrier on the other side to the neurons and they help in maintaining the membrane potential also astrocytes are also found to have a role a nutritive role they are thought to have a nutritive role for the uh, no function so that's all about the glial cells uh, the next video we'll be going to discuss about nerve we are going to name the part of neurons and know about their function i hope you found this uh, video helpful uh, see you next time with another video thank you bye bye